Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. No one of full taste of glory divine. Air of salvation, purchase of. This week we've been talking about hope, and t- today I want to look at uh, King David. He knew the power of hope when life seemed hopeless. Uh, Psalm forty-two, uh, actually Psalm forty-one, Psalm forty-two, actually, uh, it says, uh, "My dear, uh, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God." You know. You would think, without reading further into the psalm, that David is having a, a good day or a good season in his life, but it actually isn't true because he says this, my tears, my tears have been my food day and night, day and night. You know, when you think about it, my tears have been my food day and night. He's really saying he's not hes not in a good place, right? He, he's in a hopeless place. He's in a, a place of despair. Uh, he's struggling. But as David began to pen this psalm, uh, know that he wasn't in act- actually in a good place. He was in a discouraging place. And yet he remembers the Lord. And when your tears are your food, uh you have to grasp maybe what season of life he's in. He's in a place of valley. He's in a place where things aren't probably working out right for him. Uh, We don't know exactly in this moment what he's dealing with in his thoughts, uh, but how many know that our thoughts can become our world, right? Whether positive or negative, they can be our, our world. And so 
which doesn't necessarily reflect the true reality of of our current situation, even though we feel those emotions and our emotions are real. You know, one thing that I've learned and actually had to learn, to be honest, I had to learn that everybody's entitled to their emotions and, and thoughts. Uh, at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean that those thoughts and emotions are either healthy or even true, but it's theirs nonetheless. And so for David, he's very discouraged here in life. And, and, and yet there's something about him that he begins to write. And I want us to look at this. He begins to write or journal to himself. You and I have this really unique situation of God's word that, that David is writing and, and giving praise and honor and glory to God. But at the same time, he's penning this to himself in a way that he says, the Lord will command his loving kindness. David is penning this that, that though God hasn't answered yet and God's not done, God, David put his confidence in his God. So he's talking to himself. He writes to himself. He's journaling to himself about his faith in God. And there will be times in life that it really seems in your life and my life that it just is crumbling all around us, right? And you need to take it upon yourself, upon yourself to begin to speak to yourself and encourage yourself. And that's exactly what David did in many respects and many times in his life. And we see that reflected in the scriptures. He asked himself this. He goes, and I, I love this next portion of scripture. He goes, why my soul is in despair? Why are you in despair, oh my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? You know, David here is now reflecting back and he's asking himself really through the eyes of his own faith, even if you think about it, that he doesn't necessarily deny his pain, but instead he addresses it and tells himself, why are you doing what you're doing here? And, and, and we need to recognize that he says, wow, there is something different about my situation. I am disturbed, and, and I, I, I put this in the NIV right here. He says, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And then he says, put your hope in God, for I, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I, I love that. He goes, why, why, why are you so discouraged, Robin? Why, why are you just so, so troubled? You, you, you know that God is faithful. You know God is a loving God. You know God is a caring God. Yeah, I, I, I got this going on right now. I, I feel a little disruption. Uh, I'm really discouraged. But you know what, Robin? I, God is faithful. God is faithful. So I'm going to put my hope in God. And see, that's how you need to work through sometimes those moments of despair is go ahead and, and acknowledge your pain, acknowledge your disruption, uh, acknowledge your discouragement and despair. Go ahead and acknowledge to, to yourself because those are your feelings and those are your emotions. But then allow your faith to push you through and say, you know what? No, my God is a faithful God. I'm going to trust God no matter what what goes on in my life. And, and, I, and that will help you along the way. So that's really what changed David's hopelessness and discouragement. He began to change the perspective. He began to change his direction off of himself and his pain. And he placed it upon a God that he knows that is faithful because God is faithful and he's full of grace and love. And so David began to work on this. So, so when you do that, what you're doing is you're causing your feelings to begin to push aside and allow your faith to begin to govern your life. Now, whatever is going on in your life right now, know this. This is so important for you. And it's this. Satan may have a word for you. The doctors may have a word for you. Your job may have a word for you. Your friends or your spouse may have a word for you, but your God always has the final word. He always has the final word. And it's this. I love what God says through the prophet Isaiah. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. When you put your hope in God, 
no matter the circumstances, no matter the emotion, no matter the pain and the suffering, no matter the confusion, no matter even the anger. When you put your hope in God, God promised, this is God's word, you will not be disappointed. Amen? Because you placed your hope. Remember, and we're going to talk about this on Sunday, hope is not a hope that can still cause uncertainty. Hope in God is always a confident hope. A, conf a confident certainty that he will do what he promised. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this day. Lord, I thank you because we have a confident hope in you. And Lord, as we learn from King David, man after your own heart, the Bible says, there were moments where he was so discouraged and he were, where there were moments in his life where they were uh, after him and they wanted to kill him. King Saul wanted to kill David. His it, it, things going on in his life was not a healthy place, but Lord God, he also quieted himself, even writing to himself, encouraging himself and asking himself, why are you so discouraged? Why are you so discouraged? Lord God, help us as your children to begin to not walk in despair and discouragement, but simply ask ourselves, why are we discouraged? My God is greater than my situation. My God is greater, and he said he would protect me. He would protect my loved ones. So, Father, we put our trust in you now, and we place our hope in the certainty of our God. And so, Father, I pray that this would be an encouragement to us all to remind ourselves that although we will go through pain and we'll go through sorrow and we'll go through discouragement, that we will tell ourselves and encourage ourselves in the Lord and say, my God is faithful, and I will place my hope in him and I will not be discouraged. I will be overcomer. I will be an overcomer through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And so, Father, I pray your blessing upon your children. Keep them safe today, wherever their travels take them, God. Give them travel and mercies. Lord, bring safety and security to your children today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I hope you have a great, wonderful day today. Pray for me. Pray for you. I'll be praying for you. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, the 714 prayer. Take care. Love you.